Hi, today we're going to discuss data flow diagrams, context diagram, and specifically diagram zero. So context diagram. In a context diagram, we're going to use only one process. And inside that process, we're going to name it as the system name or whatever will be the name of your system, then zero. We're going also to put the entities needed so that we're going to get the sources and sinks of our data. So there should be at least one input and there should be at least one output from our system. So context diagram is the first diagram to be created when creating data flow diagrams. When this diagram will be exploded, it will be named as level zero or diagram zero. So since it's only an explosion of context diagram, the number of flows from entity or to the entity should be equivalent. So in here, we have only X, Y, and Z going to and coming from our entities. So in our level zero or diagram zero, it should be the same. Then we have level 1 diagram. Level 1 diagram is also an explosion of diagram 0. So in here, level process 2 is what is being exploded. So that's why we have the numbers such as 2.1, 2.2, 2.3 because this is only the explosion of process 2. Then we have level 2 is the child diagram of 2.2. So again, this is just... Child diagram of 2.2, so that's why the numbers are 2.21, 2.2, so on and so forth. This level 1 and level 2 as what we call as child diagrams. So drawing diagram 0 is just the explosion of the context diagram. So we are only getting detail of what is context diagram. So it is only up to nine processes so that our diagram would be simple. No too much processes involved. The maximum number of processes in diagram zero is nine since we need to make it simple. Since we can make child diagrams out of different processes found in diagram zero. Each process is numbered so that we can be able to determine which one is exploded. Major data stores and all external entities are included in diagram zero. So here is an example of diagram zero. So it includes entities, processes, and data stores. As much as possible, data flows should not overlap so that we can be able to identify which process or which data store that flow is going through so that it would be easier to understand. So here we have an example of book borrowing system. So while analysis, when the person wants to borrow for the first time, name, address, and course will be recorded. Book information is also stored in our book borrowing system, such as title, author, copyright, and publisher. A fine information is stored, especially for books who are returned overdue. Book request information is recorded when a borrower wants to borrow a book. Book information is recorded when a borrower will return a book. There will be a possible payment if the borrower will return the book beyond the due date. And the system should be able to display or produce two reports. The first one is monthly report. This report will display the date, title of books borrowed, and the total number of times that specific book is, was borrowed. And the second one is borrower's transactions report. This report will show the individual transaction for each borrower. The librarian wants to identify what are the books borrowed by a specific borrower, the time it was borrowed, when was it returned, and what are the books borrowed by that borrower. So based from those information, we have this entity relationship diagram. And from this entity relationship diagram, we have produced these tables.
So here we have our context diagram from those information. So when the borrower wants to borrow for the first time, information of that person will be recorded on the system. Book information that will be entered by the librarian will, all be, will also be recorded in our system. A fine is also recorded especially if the borrower tend to forget to return the book or the book was lost. When the borrower requests to borrow a book, the librarian staff will confirm it first. When confirmed, a slip will be given to the borrower. When the borrower returns a book, if there will be possible payments because of overdue books, then a receipt will be given to the borrower if payments or returns were made. The system should also produce reports such as monthly reports. This monthly report will display what are the books that are commonly borrowed by the borrowers. Borrower's transaction report will display specific information about a certain borrower, what are the books that the borrower constantly borrows. So let's start with borrower information. So here we have one process for our diagram zero. So a borrower information will be recorded in our system and it will be stored in our borrower table. Every time that there will be a new borrower, the last borrower ID will be taken from the table plus one, then that will be the borrower ID of the new borrower. So the borrower record will be the borrower ID, the name, address, and course of the borrower. Then let's proceed with book information. So in book information, we have the book ID, fine ID, title, copyright, author, and publisher. So the librarian will provide the information, then the information will be stored in our book table. If book ID is generated by the system, we need to get the last value stored in our book ID plus one, then that will be the new book ID of the new book. Then let's proceed with fine. So fine, we'll need to record fine ID, name, and amount. So the fine will be provided by the librarian. And it will be stored in our, it will be recorded in our system. Together with the name and amount, it will be stored in our fine table. Let's proceed with borrowing of books. So here the borrower requests the book. It will be confirmed by the librarian staff. If confirmed, a slip will be given to the borrower. So in this case, the borrower will request a book. The librarian will confirm it. So here the borrower will request a book. It will check if the book is available in our table. So we have here the book ID. The date. This can be processed using the system date. Then the confirmation coming from the lab librarian together with the due date. Then a slip will be generated by the system and will be given to the borrower. Then we have returning of books and payments. So when the borrower will return a book, there might be tendencies of payments due to overdue books. If payments or returns were made, a receipt will be given to the borrower. So in that case, in our diagram zero, return books. So we have this, our ERD, our table from our ERD. So borrow ID. This is taken in our borrower table. Yan siya, so that we will know who borrowed the book. Then in our book ID, so that we will know what book is being returned. Receipt number, this is generated by the system when we're going to generate a receipt and will be given to the borrower. Number, so that we will know the connection with the receipt and the slip number so that we will know what books are included in the receipt, the date of the payment, and how much was being paid. So they are all saved in re book returns payment table. 
A receipt will be generated by the system and given to the borrower. Then we have monthly reports. So in a monthly report, it should be able to display on the screen or print in a paper the date the book was being borrowed, the title of books being borrowed, and how many times those books were being borrowed. So to get the date when the book was being borrowed, we need to get it from book request table. Because in this book request table, all, borrow, all information about borrowing of books are recorded here. Title of books borrowed, this can be found in our book table. Number of times borrowed, still this can be found in our book request table. Then we have borrower's transaction report. So here, the librarian expects to see in her or his screen or print in a paper name, address, and course of a specific borrower together with the date borrowed, date returned, and books borrowed. So in that case, that is our process 7. So here, so that we can get the borrower's information, we need to get the borrower TBL, borrower information such as name, course. And if you want to get what are the books that are being borrowed, so we need to get it in the book tab table or book TBL so mm -hmm. that we will know when this book was being borrowed, we need to get those information from book request TBL. And we want to identify when those books was returned we need to get the information from Book Returns Payment TBL. And when this is generated, it will be given to the librarian. So as you can see, we can have multiple data store. We can also duplicate entities. But we are not allowed to duplicate processes. Again, we're not allowed to duplicate processes. As much as possible, Avoid overlapping of arrows. Just like in this example, there is no overlapping of arrows since we can duplicate data stores and entities. But then again, we are not allowed to duplicate processes. And you need to make sure you can be able to produce one diagram. It means all these symbols are connected with each other. So let's check our context diagram. So in here, in our borrower, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 going out to our borrower. So let's check if our level 0 is also 4. So we have 1, 2, 3, and 4. Let's go back. We have two arrows going out to our system. So let's check. So we have 1 and 2. So, the, our entity borrower will only accept two flows. And then in our library staff, it will send a data and it will not receive anything. So, in our library staff, it will only send and no arrows coming into our entity. In our librarian, there are two information provided by the librarian. So in our librarian, there are only two information coming out from our librarian. And our li librarian will receive two reports. And our librarian will receive two reports. So it means this diagram zero is an explosion of our context diagram. I hope you have learned something today.